Okay, so on page 121, we have four problems that we're going to do together. We're going to walk through these problems. So when you are on your own, you'll have some models to look back at. All right, and let's start with number one there. And it says, what is the frequency of green light, which has a wavelength of 4.90 times 10 to the negative seventh meters? Now, we have to go back and always start with this formula right there to solve any of the problems that are going to come in this particular section. C equals lambda times nu, wavelength times frequency. Which one are we given in this problem? Of those three symbols right there, in number one on page 121, which one are we given? Wavelength. And which symbol is it? Is it the first, second, or third symbol? N second, good. It's the upside down Y. Lambda stands for wavelength. So what I want you to do is, I want you to write this again, but this time, just like in math class, I want you to substitute in that value, 4.90 times 10 to the negative seventh, put it in parentheses, and then after it, we still have that symbol, Greek letter nu, for frequency, which is what it's asking us to solve for. Now, what's another piece of information we know, but the question doesn't necessarily ask us? Good, C. And what is C again? Very good. 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Okay, put that in parentheses. Let's write out the other side one more time. And now we are on the hunt to figure out what that Greek letter nu stands for. Can I just start cranking through stuff right now, or do I need to rearrange? What do you think? It, do I have a variable by itself right now? No. The variable that's there is Greek letter nu, but we got to get it alone just like last year in algebra. You got to isolate your variable. How do we do that? What's our plan of attack? Yes. If I divide both sides by this right here, what's in parentheses, then I'll have isolated Greek letter nu. So I'm going to really take this step by step so you can see how we do this. So if I'm dividing this on each side, that goes away. And what's left over is Greek letter nu there. And now we have a math problem over here on the left-hand side. Now, this is the first time we've ever had to really put our scientific notations together in, a, in the same problem. So what I want you to do is I want you to make use of the parentheses key on your calculator. And I want you to you, let them help you in your calculation. The problem is if you don't use parentheses, your calculator gets confused as to what you want it to do. Okay? I'll put mine up there and show you how we do all right, now depending, everybody in here is a different type of calculator, so it might look a, a tad different on yours. But here is uh, how I started. I hit my parentheses key to start it off. I have 3.0 times, and then right here on my calculator, let me see, see if I can show you that, I have a button that says 10x. But to get there, I got to use the shift button. So I'm 3.0 times shift 10x to the eighth power. I'm going to close parentheses, then I'm going to hit divide, and I'm going to put one more parentheses, and then I'm going to put the bottom number in it. 4.90 times shift 10 to the x, negative 7, close parentheses, enter. And that's the answer I get right there. Let me scoot it over so you can see if there is a 14 up in the corner as well. So my answer on my calculator screen is 6.12, a whole bunch of digits. And if you look right after my 8, I have times 10 to the 14. Some of your guys' calculators will say E14, and it means the same thing. Okay. So if yours says E14, that means times 10 to the 14th power. Now, 
the only thing we have to worry about at this point is units, okay? Because we have, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in my answer right here on the left. And I'm going to chisel it down to just two digits. 6.1 times 10 to the 14th. And if you look at what I have that hasn't been crossed out, I got meters over seconds divided by meters. Well, if I have meter on top and a meter underneath, cancel those out. So what we have now is S on the bottom of a division line. And what it looks like as a unit is S to the minus 1. Okay, S to the minus 1. So your answer then is 6.1 times 10 to the 14th S to the minus 1, which is also called a hertz. HZ could be used for the frequency as well. So I took it very slow and methodically as I went through this problem, but you saw that we had to get the variable by itself in order to solve. Okay, uh, Let's do 2. 2 says an x-ray has a wavelength of 1.15 times 10 to the negative 10th meter. What's its frequency? Okay, So it's going to be done almost entirely the same way. It all stems from this initial equation that looks like that. C equals lambda nu. Wavelength times frequency equals speed of a wave. And in this case, our wavelength is 1.15. Oops, 1.15 times 10 to the negative 10th meters. Frequency is what we're trying to solve. And C again is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So again, mathematically speaking, without all those steps I did in number one, this has to move from this side over here. It has to go underneath it. Okay, It gets divided on both sides. And that way it cancels out on the right, but now it's on the bottom on the left-hand side. So once again, we have a division problem. We have 3.0. times 10, whoops, times 10x to the eighth power divided by 1.15 times 10 raised to the negative 10th power. Close my parentheses, hit enter, and I get, uh, let's get out of the glare there, 2.60 times 10 to the, what is that, 18th up there? 18th power, okay. So for my answer, which I'll put down here, I'll put frequency symbol, 2.6 times 10 to the 18th hertz, HC, or S to the minus 1. Okay, let's skip down to four for a second. This is a different type of problem because in this one, they're asking us to find wavelength. Okay, in number four, let's put our base equation up there again. C equals lambda nu. It says the popular radio station broadcasts with a frequency of 94.7 megahertz. What is the wavelength of the broadcast? Now, why do you think they give me the 1 MHZ equals 10 to the 6 HZ? Why do you think they tell me that? Just for smiles and giggles? No, they tell me that because I'm going to have to do a conversion. Because I can't pop hertz into the form, uh, megahertz into the formula. It needs to be in hertz. So if I have 94.7 megahertz, Hertz. What is that equivalent to again? 10 to the 10 to what power? The big M? The sixth power. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's see what 10 to the sixth power is. We have 1, then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. And this is Hertz. So let's multiply 94.7 times 10 to the 6th hertz. Okay, and if you need a calculator, go ahead and do that. We're doing this to get the problem started because we can't officially start it yet. 
94.7 times 10 raised to the sixth power equals, and then you see 94,700,000 hertz. That's what I'm going to put here. And now I can officially start my problem. So these formulas don't allow you to use megahertz in them. If you're doing frequency, you have to do hertz. So if it gives you mega, you have to be able to convert before you start your problem. Now, I can use at this point the regular formula C equals lambda nu. Okay? I know what C is. We never changed. 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's the speed of all waves. All right? Now, before we were solving for lambda, but now we're going to solve for or, I'm sorry, before we were solving for frequency, but now we're going to solve for lambda. So what I'm going to put over here is 94,000, uh, 94,700,000 hertz. How do I isolate my lambda symbol now? Is there any major difference than the last type of problem? Not really. I got to get that lambda symbol all by itself. So what do I do again? Divide, move this underneath that and then it cancels off the right side and again we just have a division problem okay so we have um, in this case 3.0 once again times 10 um, times 10 raised to the eighth close parentheses divided by and then I have parentheses 94 million seven hundred thousand I hit enter and I wind up with uh, 3.167. I'm just going to round that to wavelength equals 3.17 meters. Okay. Um, if you remember that hertz can equal s to the minus 1 right there. And then you put it down below. The s's cross cancel and you're left with just meters. So what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about the radio station 94.7 on the FM dial. How big is the wave from the peak to the peak as it flies through the air in invisible-like? It's 3.17 meters. It's about 9 or 10 feet long. So from one peak to the next, it's going through the air right now. How do I know it's going through the air? What would be a quick experiment to figure it out if it was? Turn on the radio, dial it in 94.7. If we hear music, guess what? We just, uh, we just supported the fact that, yes, it is there, and it's about 10 feet in size from one peak to the next. So you have to be able to use this formula during this chapter. Okay, It's not a huge part of the chapter, but it's a piece of the chapter that is worth knowing how to do. Okay, because right now we're in the wave understanding of light, but pretty soon we're going to be in the particle of, uh, nature of light. And the calculations will be of a different type, but they'll still be there. And it's something you have to be able to do. So uh, what I want you to do tonight is I want you to do the second page of that reading guide, which walks you through an example problem like this. And hopefully it starts to sink in. Remember, one time's not enough. Us solving three problems together, that won't cut it. You have to do more. you got to follow the yellow boxed problems until you until it starts sinking in. If it doesn't sink in, you got to get help. you got to go online and visit some websites that will walk you through problems. you got to do what you got to do. Store it up here and keep it up here. Be able to do this problem come test or quiz time. Okay? I know it's a lot, but we got to get there. Okay? It's what's being asked of us in this class. Any questions? All right. What we're going to do, let me shut this down there for a second.